Hello and welcome to Just One More Watch. I've touched on some of the themes that I'm going to discuss today before. I made a couple of videos specifically recommending that you check out five different micro brands. And in the intros to each of those videos, I talked about some of the pros and cons of micro brand purchasing and ownership as I see them. But today I thought I would formalize that and present you with five reasons why you should buy a micro brand watch and five reasons why you shouldn't buy a micro brand watch. This one should be fun. Now these are just my opinions. I'm sure most of you have thought of most of these yourself, but it's good to have them all in one place, I think. I reckon there are gonna be more than one or two savvy micro brand owners and prospective micro brand owners. Watch this video and read your comments. So please give them something to read today. Are you a fan of micro brands? What's your favorite micro brand and why? Are you not a fan of micro brands? Have you had a disaster buying micros? Again, let me know about that in the comments section. And are you still sitting on the fence? Are you still undecided? What would it take to get you across the line? What do you need before you jump on board the micro bus? The world has gone micro over the last 10 to 15 years, or at least that's how it seems. The number of micro breweries cranking out endless ranges of craft beer micro distilleries making vodkas and gins of various flavors and persuasions. They're becoming increasingly popular. I think people are eschewing the mainstream and heading towards small batch products because it gives them a new experience. They get to experiment and they get to attach themselves to a small boutique brand in a way that just wasn't possible before. I reckon that's one of the appeals of micro brand watch ownership anyway. So what exactly is a micro brand watch? Well, if you check Wikipedia and all good students will know that Wikipedia is not a valid source because it's user editable. They quantify it in terms of output. They say a micro brand watch is between 300 and 2000 units per year. I'm not sure that that applies anymore. Maybe that was the case five or six years ago before the micro brand scene was so well developed. I reckon a lot of micro brand owners uh, cling jealously to the label of micro brand, but yet would give their right pinky to sell more than 2000 units per year. So I don't think it's just in terms of sales volume. I think it's much more about the business model. Micro brand watch companies are very much a product of the internet age. That has allowed somebody in California to design and commission a watch that is made in China and sold to people in South Africa, Buenos Aires, Auckland, or Kiev, wherever. That has only really been possible over the last 10 to 15 years. And it's that direct to market model, that's what I think is a micro brand. That's what I think a micro brand watch is about because you're cutting out the retailer, you're selling these watches yourself, you don't have a distribution network to pay for either. You can afford to sell watches much, much cheaper than is found on the high street. High street brands, they're paying up to 50% of the price to the retailers. Half of what you pay for a Seiko in a jeweler's goes to the jewelers. It doesn't go into the watch, which is one reason why I think micros are so attractive as will be discussed. Okay then, so let's get into it, starting with my five positives before moving on to five things I think you should be wary about before purchase. Okay, positive number one, I'm gonna call exclusivity. Small batch watchmaking, you don't have to spend five figures or six figures to get a limited release watch on your wrist. Micro brands tend to make watches in batches of 50, 100, perhaps 200. Sometimes that's per model, sometimes that's per colorway. Regardless, generally, when they're gone, they're gone. They don't repeat models. The chances of getting on a bus, looking across to see what watch the person sitting next to you is wearing and find out that they're wearing the same micro brand as you pretty much zero. And you get that exclusivity for hundreds of dollars rather than thousands of dollars. I hinted at it in the intro as well. There's that kind of contrarian thing that you get from buying a micro. Sometimes it's great to buy a big brand watch because you're buying known quantity and you're buying into the history and heritage of that particular company. Sometimes it's nice not doing that. Sometimes it's nice buying the alternative, a new and more interesting product perhaps, something that you don't find every Everywhere else, something that says more about you, the buyer, than a big brand watch does. I think that is the first big positive of micro brand ownership. The second is value, and I hinted at this earlier on the direct to market, cutting out the middleman, disrupting the industry model. How many times have you seen that one in a Kickstarter campaign, especially? But there is some validity to it. No distribution network, 
no retailers, nobody else taking a cut. That means that micro brand owners, which are generally smaller operations, quite often one man bands, it is usually men. There are some ladies coming into the industry now, but it is still very male dominated. It's usually a smaller operation. They don't have shareholders like Seiko does, for example. They don't have the big distribution and retailer networks. They can set the prices very attractively if they so choose. I'm not suggesting that micro brands aren't trying to turn a profit because of course they are, but they don't necessarily have the overheads that a big brand does. They can offer more value to the consumer as a consequence. I'm constantly moaning about three to four hundred dollar Seikos, not having Sapphire Crystal, having hollow end links and press clasps and push pin systems, various other cost cutting exercises. You rarely see that with a micro because they're operating to a different set of profit margins. Not all micros offer great value for money. So if you're looking at a micro brand and you still think it's a bit expensive, have a look around because chances are there'll be another micro doing something very similar, offering you better value. So value, definitely a big part of the strength of the advantages offered by micros, I think. The third reason why I think you should look seriously at micro brands is because of the designs that are available within the micro brand sphere. Generally more interesting, more edgy, more colorful, more varied and using a greater variety of interesting and edgy materials than you find with big brands. And it's pretty easy to see why. The only thing stopping a micro brand from getting to the concept to the production point is the will of the owner who's generally the person that designed it in the first place. No committees, no corporate identities, no corporate looks have to be followed. When a micro brand is being designed, it really is just up to the owner. I've seen sapphire bezel inserts, meteorite dials, meteorite bezel inserts, forged carbon, plenty of bronze, titanium by the bucket load. All of these materials that have not become nearly so commonplace within big brands are all readily available from smaller brands, as is color. I think smaller brands are much more inclined to take risks with color that big brands just aren't prepared to take because they have an identity to adhere to, because they have design committees, because they have shareholders, because they have far more rigid corporate structures than your average micro. The fourth reason why I think you should have a look at micro brands is because of community and connection to brand. I think it's possible to connect with a micro far more readily and in a different way than you can do with a big brand. Now we're all part of this big online watch community and regardless of what you're into, you'll find groups of like-minded individuals to share your passion with. Whether you're into Rolex, Omega or Seiko, you'll find a forum or a Facebook group where you can exchange wrist shots and ideas and aspirations and aims to purchase the latest model. You can obviously also do that with micro brands. And in my view, I think micro brand owner groups are even more ardent and even more rabid in some respects than big brand owner groups are. You also with micro brands get the chance quite often to interact directly with the brand owner. Like I said, a lot of these small brands are owner operated. If you send the brand an email, if you shoot them an Instagram message, chances are it's the person who owns the company and who designed the watch that will reply to you. And that I think is fantastic. You get to have a relationship with the brand owner, with the designer of the watch, with the owner of the company before you make a purchase. And that I think can mean that the watch on your wrist means so much more than if you just buy from a big soulless corporation in Switzerland or Japan, for example. That can have a flip side, but I'll discuss that later. The fifth positive that I see is choice. There are just so many different micro brands to choose from and the avalanche shows no sign of losing pace. There are more and more micro brands launching every year. Not all of them go on to be long-term successes. Some of them are one hit wonders or one flop wonders if you see what I mean, but you are not short of choice if you go micro. You want a pink dive watch on a candy cane strap with a crown at 10 o'clock? No problem. You want a brown TV style 70s automatic chronograph? No problem. Sorry, you want that in DLC black? We can do that for you as well. Pretty much 
any watch you can imagine you will find from a micro brand. Somebody has also wanted one of those and if they couldn't find it, quite often they have created the watch from themselves. Micros can be a great way to complement the other watches in your collection as well. Don't get me wrong, it's not a choice of one or the other. You can own big brand watches, but you can fill the gaps in your collection with some really interesting and exciting micro brand watches as well. I think more readily than you can do with the big brand. So choice is a big, big factor, and I can only see that choice getting wider and deeper over the years to come. Okay, okay, Jody, that's all well and good. Time to dish some dirt. Five reasons why I think you shouldn't buy a micro brand watch, or at least five potentially negative factors that I think you should take into consideration before you do. The first one is probably the most obvious and it's resale value. Now this very much depends on you. You'll need to think about how you are as a collector, whether you are a notorious flipper, <coughs> guilty, or whether you're somebody who hangs on to their watches long-term. If you're a long-termer, it's not as much of an issue, but if you buy stuff and turn it over within months or even weeks, then you've got to be a lot more careful buying micro than you do buying a big brand. If you bought a Seiko, for example, and it doesn't quite fit your wrist the way you thought it would, or the dial color doesn't quite match your eyes the way you thought it would, you'll be able to sell that on eBay or on a watch forum or a watch group for maybe 75 to 80% of the price you paid for it very very easily. Now some micro brands you can actually speculate on. Some of these hot models that I mentioned earlier on, small batches that sell out, if you buy the right colorway, you can flip it at a profit shortly after they've sold out to somebody who missed out. But it doesn't always work that way. Particularly the Kickstarter stuff, particularly watches that are only in their first model, young brands or brands that end up being orphans, they don't make it past their first model. If you buy an error and you try to move those watches on, it is not nearly as easy. Let's face it, somebody will always buy something if the price is right, but you may end up losing a lot more of your money if you're a flipper and you buy the wrong micro. So be warned, do bear that in mind, work out what type of collector you are, whether you're a keeper or a flipper, and pick your micro brand accordingly. The second con, very much following on from the first, is long-term support or potentially the lack thereof. Not so much of a problem with micros that are well-established, that are good businesses and have been operating now for four, five, six, even 10 years. Maybe more of a problem with the Kickstarter stuff, the stuff that doesn't quite disrupt the industry like the owner thought they were going to and peters out after only one or two watches. If you buy one of these and drop one and lose the crown or shatter the sapphire crystal, you may have difficulties getting a replacement part. Again, think about that carefully before you purchase. If you like the look of a small brand but you're worried about the long-term support, why not hang back and wait for them to establish themselves as a long-term player before you're guaranteed that support, before you invest your cash in their company and their watches. The third potential fly in the micro brand ointment is warranty. If you buy a Seiko from the Seiko boutique, you'll pay through the nose, but you'll get a five year warranty. If you buy a Seiko from an authorized dealer online, you'll generally get a three year warranty. If you buy from a micro brand, you'll most likely get a two year warranty. Some do offer five, some do offer three, most will offer two, some only offer a one year warranty and I complain about that every time I come across it. Some of my favorite micro brands, some that I still recommend, only have one year warranties with their watches, which I don't think is good enough. Now, again, this very much comes down to you, how you wear your watches, whether you're a long term and how much value you put in that warranty, but make sure you read the small print because quite often one way they will manage to save a few dollars is by trimming the warranty down to a year. The fourth thing that I think you've got to look out for is on the fly product testing. I don't think all micro brands are testing these products particularly thoroughly. I don't think some micro brands are testing these products at all. When you think about it, a micro, because of the efficiency of the model that they operate within, they can go from idea to design, to render, to prototype, to production in a matter of months. We see this time and time again. I think quite often when the prototypes go back to the brand owner, the designer, they'll go, Oh yeah, that's pretty good. I'll have 250 please. And they won't test them as thoroughly as they ought to. I've been sent watches that I've received and I've been like, 
Why did they do that? Why has this got to production? And again, naming no names, but if you watch my videos regularly, you will have heard me call out some of my favorite brands for doing this, for rushing products onto market without thoroughly testing them, and then trying to remedy those situations afterwards. I've seen it time and time again. So if that's okay, if you enjoy being a guinea pig, if you enjoy being a product tester, then go ahead. If you don't, then maybe there's a bit more security and safety knowing that you've bought a big brand that has been thoroughly tested and come from a line of watches probably 10, 15, 20 years old that have all been thoroughly tested. Now my fifth and final con, the fifth thing that I think you should look out for before you purchase a microband watch is dubious customer service. Now I talked about this as one of the pros. A lot of these companies are small owner operator businesses. If you send them an email or a message, you get a response from the brand owner. If that brand owner doesn't have, shall we say, an industry standard idea of what customer service looks like, you'll be at the mercy of that brand owner's idea of what customer service looks like. I have seen brand owners respond to comments on Instagram about their watches in a truly shocking manner, a manner that you simply wouldn't get if you had a customer complaint about a Seiko or a Citizen, for example. I have also heard nightmares about brand owners just disappearing, not responding to emails or messages about problems with their watches. Now, I'm not gonna name any names here today, but you're more than welcome to do so yourself in the comment section. You buy into a brand, you buy into the brand owner, that can have positive effects, that can also sometimes be a negative experience. So there you have it, five pros and five cons of buying a micro brand watch. Like I said, I'm sure most of you have encountered or at least thought of most of those before. Did I miss anything? Let me know, leave me a comment. I'm really looking forward to reading the comments today. I think there'll be some tasty ones, both to the positive and the negative. And I wonder if any brand owners will be brave enough to leave comments themselves. Thank you for watching. I will see you in a future video which may or may not be a microbrand review.